Hello, welcome to Country Sports TV. It's late at night. I done a vi video earlier in the day. Just thought I'd do another one and have a little bit of a drink. Just trying to relax myself. I've been doing a lot of DX lately in the workshop. I get shotguns that have already been deact and rifles that have already been deact and also pistols and machine guns that are already off license because they've already been deact some of them go back to the 90s with proof exemption certificates with them i have to upgrade them for the new deact license or ticket certificate so that the auction house can sell them. I've done Vickers machine guns, Sterling machine guns. I've done loads of brain guns. I've had a uh, collection here last year of every machine gun from Japanese, Russian, Czechoslovakian, Denmark, German, British and American. It was a collection that wanted to be sold. They were already deacted. They all came in their own boxes. And that took me a fair while. Take them to pieces, find out what was wrong, find out what work needed to be done, take them to the proof house, and they've got to be viewed twice. Take the inside out, cut things up, weld things up, let the proof house see it, then put the gun together, and then weld it up together so the slide and that and the triggers don't move. The problem we've got is the gun trade is in trouble. It's being hit by different sides at the moment. We've got inflation. We're going into depression by the looks of it. People have got less money. The firearms departments are taking so long to renew licenses. People can't change their guns. I had a guy in here the other day said, oh, my license is in for a new I, you know, can you get me a new gun? I said, no, mate, not until you got your license, because I've got to write it on the license when you get it. Oh. How long is that going to tell us? I don't know. You'll have to ask the firearms department. I've got a lad that's applied for a new certificate. He's been waiting four months and still hadn't got it. I got a bloke whose ticket wanted to be renewed. He was going on holiday, so he put his four shotguns in with me for storage in my RFD. That was nine months ago. He still has not had his license back. So there's not the new customers or the old ones aren't getting the licenses renewed so they can't buy new shotguns they can't change shotguns so the number of people out there that are able to buy shotguns has dropped so the trade goes down people haven't got the money so the trade goes down the other thing you've got is they be the vice people that you can't use steel in Damascus barrels so nobody wants to buy a Damascus barrel gun so the price of hammer guns go into auction where they were around about 100 150 pounds you'd be lucky to get 10 or 30 quid for a good one basic non engraved one what you would call a gamekeeper's gun the auction house doesn't even want them anymore because they're not selling. I'm deacting them and putting them in as deacts and getting more money for them. I had two guns in here. I had a Colt Cap and Ball Italian Copy Revolver in 36 calibre. I, I had two of them. I was asked to deact one and the other one was one that somebody had given me to sell. So I thought, oh, I'll put them both in auction. So I deacted one 
and I put them both in auction. The real one, the real working model, got 20 quid. The D Act, Colt copy, and they were exactly the same. Made in the same factory in Italy, two different names on them. Got £140. So the gun trade is in turmoil at the moment. The best thing that our shooting organisations can do to help save shooting is to stop the idea of having a lead ban. Just stop working on it. That will help then people buy old guns and hammer guns. People have hammer gun comp clay shooting competitions. Well, they're afraid that they're not going to be able to do it if they bring a lead ban in because they can't afford to use bismuth to shoot a few clays. And they're not going to use steel in a Damascus barrel of guns because of the advice they've been given. Now, I've said it before on this channel, that it, when you've got your proof on a gun, it's for the pressure of the cartridge. It's not for the type of shot. So, if you've got a gun that's past proof and is still in proof, and that's on the size of the bore or no damage to the bore and it's all nice and shiny, then you should be able to use steel. I hate the thing. I hate the stuff. Bloody crap. But, you can use whatever shot you like in it, as long as the pressure of the cartridge matches the proof marks. If you had a gun that was Damascus barrel, and was 3 inch, and was proofed for high performance, which had the Ferdley on it, you could use steel in it. But, if the experts, the so-called experts, yeah, well, I'm not going to say any more. Think that you can't use steel in Damascus barrels. I will go with it. Because it's one thing I can use to say, I think that we ought to be retaining lead so we can still use hammer guns and muzzle loaders, mind you. Because it isn't going to be easy to use plaswads in muzzle loaders. I think it's a bad idea. Anyway. Ian, moaning about the gun trade, Country Sports TV, I'm going to try and do some more videos in the workshop, people seem to like those, but I, I don't really have things that I can show you, there's things that happen, um, and I want to be able to start something and finish it and show you, and uh, maybe I edit it, and, you know, a, a few hours work in that quarter of an hour or half an hour video. But I do a bit on a gun, then I'm waiting for other bits and things to be done. And it's not not as simple as it looks. So anyway, Ian, Country Sports TV, signing off. And stay safe.